Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be converting a Sapper website into Svelte Kit. Now, before we get into that, I do want to show a cool little project I'm working on very briefly because this is just a teaser of a project that I just started out of nowhere called Bukit, uh, the least spooky way to build your components. And this is a Svelte Kit first and focused uh, storybook type of plugin, or basically, this thing lives as a route in your site and allows you to open up and build components in isolation. And I've been working on this for about 24, 48 hours, not even that long. I mean, two days, and a couple hours over those days. So this is still very fresh, but as you can see, uh, we can change a canvas frame. We can make it black, white. We can change the uh, color to be anything we want it to be bar hyphen hyphen primary there we go it's purple pretty neat huh yeah transparent cool checker get rid of that checker really neat stuff we have size presets in here if you want to have it like be an iphone here's what it looks like on the iphone and you can use these components right this is real life in your project so if you're interested in this kind of thing go ahead and give it a follow on bukit i will post this link in the description this is just a quick teaser i'll be talking more about this later but again it's basically like a storybook type of plugin you got resizable panes you can have your stories with your code there's going to be a lot more here but something that i wanted that didn't exist so i made it i'll talk a lot more about this in the future all right so uh, we have this Sapper site, and what's funny is that I haven't touched this thing in a while. I pulled it from GitHub, I ran an npm install, or a pnpm install, I should say, and then tried to run pnpm dev, and it hits me with this package subpath compiler.js is not defined in exports. I honestly, I don't even have... I don't even have the brain pat the brain power right now to be like, all right, let's let's debug a sapper site that I haven't touched in two years. So because of that, I'm gonna convert this thing into Svelte Kit. Okay, we're gonna get this up and running by the end of this video. So this is what the dependencies look like, and this again is a sapper site. It has not been touched uh, since 2000, the year 2020, so two full years. And you can see that a lot of dependencies in this thing are going to look funny for what you might typically have in a Svelte Kit project. One, we have Polka, okay, which we don't need, so we can remove Polka. Um, I think we can remove serve. I don't, I, yeah, I don't think we're using serve for anything in Svelte Kit. We're going to keep marked. We'll keep highlight JS. We'll keep gray matter, I think. Um, I'll, I'll remove compression as well. And I'll keep Svelte Notion, although I don't really want to use this package because um, I haven't been, now that the Notion official API came out, it's needs a lot of work. Um, dependencies, we can get rid of all this Babel stuff. Let's get rid of all of the Babel stuff. And we can even get rid of all the roll-up stuff. Um, all of these roll-up plugins. We can get rid of the sapper. We can get rid of roll-up and maybe NPM run all. I don't even know what this is doing for us. Okay. So just absolutely decimating <laughs> these dependencies here. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change this to be an ESM based project. And to do that, we'll want to say type is equal to module. And this is going to make it so this project is now using ESM ECMAScript modules rather than common JS. And that's going to be great for us, right? It's going to be great. So we're moving here. This is some of the stuff that you need to have. We removed um, Sapper. Let's go ahead and install Svelte Kit. So to do that, what we'll want to do is, N or I'm using PNPM here. Let's bump this up. We'll want to PNPM install hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev at Svelte forward slash or Svelte JS forward slash kit, okay? And if this isn't bringing in the next version, I don't know what version it installs. It looks like it's next 314. You can just type in next in here and that way it always gives you the latest. That's what I do with Svelte Kit. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, we got our, our, our Svelte Kit in here. Next, we're gonna wanna take a look at some of these scripts, right? Um, in fact, we don't need to get them all running perfectly, but uh, the dev for right now, be a good one to get get working we'll say svelte hyphen kit dev is what the new command becomes we don't want this smart 
start or any of these. In fact, I can just get rid of all of these except for the dev for now, because I'll add my own build later. We can do that off camera. Okay, so, so far, Nice and easy, right? Um, make sure we can run a maybe a pnpm install now, even though, let's see if it removes some of that stuff. Okay, everything is up to date, cool. Okay, so you might be thinking, what do we do next? Can we just run pnpm dev and have this thing work? No, it's gonna fail out. Uh, you need to create a svelte config.js file. It's great that they give you that little warning. So let's go ahead and create a config file. In fact, we have a rollup config already in here. And I'm just gonna delete this. This is all this Babel plugin stuff. A lot of stuff in here I don't want or need. I'm just gonna straight up delete it. Okay, see you, see you later, sayonara. Okay, let's go ahead and add a new file. That new file is going to be svelte.config.js, svelte.config.js. Okay, this is gonna be our Svelte config file. Now you can go ahead and you know grab a Svelte config from their own documentation. I have one sitting around. Um, this is what it looks like. I'm probably going to need to install Adapter Auto as well as Svelte preprocess. So pnpm install, hyphen hyphen save, hyphen dev, Svelte Adapter Auto, as well as Svelte preprocess, okay? Nice and easy, get those things in here so it's, it'll be working. Now let's go ahead and try our, our dev command again to see what happens. Even though I know it's not going to actually run even though, but this is a good sign. We now have at least this up and running. So all we had to do to get to this point was to update our package.json and add a svelte config file. It's a good start, right? Let's go ahead and head to our site. Now we can try and you can see SRC app does not exist. Now this gets to the point where some of the, the general project structure for the application is gonna be different between Sapper and SvelteKit. So those of you um, who haven't gotten too deep into SvelteKit yet and are coming from Sapper, one thing we'll want to do here is delete this folder that was the generated Sapper folder. We just straight up don't need it but we also wanna go ahead and add some files. So inside of our project is a source folder. Now you can see that we have a lot of stuff in here um, and the default HTML in Sapper is actually called template.html. So we'll call this index.html now. And that's nice because index.html makes a lot more sense personally. Let's go ahead and now take a look at what we need to have index.html working. Cause you'll see some of these things in here like Sapper HTML, and you can just guess that that's not gonna work, right? And actually, uh, I think I misspoke. I said index.html, I'm sorry, this needs to be app.html. What am I thinking, okay? App.html, my bad. That's what the SvelteKit version is. Now, instead of having Sapper base, Sapper styles, Sapper head, what you end up having is you end up having just one, which is Svelte head, okay? So Svelte head and Svelte body are the two that you need from Svelte kit. So we can get rid of Sapper base and we can change Sapper head to Svelte head and then Sapper HTML, believe it or not, becomes Svelte body, okay? And I'm gonna leave this div here with this ID, honestly, because I don't know if I've tied anything to that ID. It's not hurting anyone. Okay, let's get rid of this Sapper scripts. And what we now have is a Svelte head and Svelte body, and that is it for app.html. Let's go ahead and see app.html does not exist. If I re-render this, whoa! It's not perfect, there's no nav. Um, there's things missing, the, f the font works. Um, all right. All right, all right, pretty cool, huh? Okay, okay, okay. Let's go ahead and get this actually uh, working with our layouts now. So some of the things that are different between SvelteKit and Sapper is that Sapper has a routes folder and they have a layout file, but the layout file is prefixed, prefixed with one underscore, where in SvelteKit it is prefixed with two underscores. And that's just a convention of SvelteKit. So it's easy enough to just say, all right, you know this layout that we had? Slate is now gonna be two underscores. In fact, let's bump this over here now that we have a working site. And you can see almost instantly, we now have some bit of navigation up top here. I should keep in mind, 
hey, page transition animations still work after all that. Um, that's actually pretty impressive on this on this uh, sapper's part. Now there's some things obviously broken here, but pretty cool, right? Okay. I tried to do the doom effect in the video game Dune when it all like doom, not Dune when it all kind of like pulls down like that. It's just kind of fun. Okay. Okay. Let's keep this moving here. So we have our, our files here that have changed, but what other files have changed? Cause obviously this is going to be a little bit different in sapper from SvelteKit. For instance, client.js. What is this doing in SvelteKit? Nothing. Toss it. Um, client utilities. What's this doing in SvelteKit? Um, nothing. Get rid of it. Okay. Although, I'm not convinced I, I don't use this myself somewhere. I, whatever. We don't need it. Get rid of it. I'm using version control. It's fine. Um, SRC server. We don't need it. Get rid of it. And I'm not using a service worker for the site. So get rid of it. Okay. No, that's pretty good. What about utilities? I think I made this utilities myself. Get all MDN files. So this is my own personal file. This is not a, a Svelte kit or sapper file. That's fine. No. Um, what else do we want to get rid of? You know, they, there is this node modules folder inside of source. This is not something we want or need. So let's go ahead and delete this. And some of the other things is like we have our content and we have our components in here. Now you might be noticing that the components are still working, right? They're still working. So even though we have our routes and let's say we have our layout file, this is importing nav from components.nav. This works. So it's, it's a more common place to put your files, your components into like a lib folder in Svelte kit. And that's what we do for level up tutorials. That's not something I'm going to make you sit through here um, because that's going to be kind of tedious. I also want to remove, uh, I have this font being exposed in the repo. So I want to remove that. There's a handful of tweaks that I would like to do. I did have this error page, which is also under one underscore, which having two underscores will fix that. And I believe I have more layouts in here. Okay, so while I definitely still have some work to go here, uh, at least getting the blog posts and speaking stuff kind of redone to use some of Vite's handier um, methods where we can do import eager, Maybe I want to add in some MDX in here, MD specs sort of stuff. So I'm going to tweak on it. Maybe I'll make a second video to show you where this thing ended up. But for the most parts, all of the big sapper to svelte kit parts of this are out of the way. And I have a new site that I can actually work on, update, and feel comfortable making it not look like total garbage. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.